Good morning. I, I hope y'all are all doing well. I have something that I really want to share, and it won't take long. I want to share a little bit about anxiety and depression. And um, I realized as I thought about these topics that there are three categories that you might fall under. If you are familiar with these, either you have come to accept and even name them as a part of your everyday life. Maybe you deal with them. Maybe you wake up nervous. Maybe you have to self-medicate. Maybe you feel like being depressed is totally normal and nothing to be concerned about. Or maybe you've just accepted it as a fact of life. You may fall into other categories where you're denying that these things exist and for whatever reason, you just don't hold, they don't hold any stock in your mind. And then the second category may be you, you don't want to admit that you are dealing with them. You don't want to call them by their name. You don't want to admit there's a problem. And you see other people dealing with them, but you don't want to call it that in your own life because it might be some sort of weak point. It might make you seem weak. It might make you feel weak. But I'm here to share with you that there is a 1000% cure, a cure. I'm not talking about a remedy. I'm not talking about a Band-Aid. I'm saying there is a cure for anxiety, for depression, for self-harm, for unaliving thoughts, there is a cure. I would not say this. I'm, first of all, I'm in my right mind. I'm sober. I have been sober for almost two years now. I haven't had to self-medicate or self-soothe or anything like that. I used to disassociate. I used to try to escape reality. And if that's you today, then I want to share with you that there is a cure. There is a cure. And if you've never heard of it before, it is the power of God. His name is Jesus. And where his presence is, those things cannot remain because he is holy and perfect and good. And those things are imperfect. They are unholy. They are not good. They are not of God. When something that is not of God approaches God, it cannot stand. That is the whole point of the cross. We were dead in our sin. We were covered in sin. And Jesus paid the price for our sin. He took that death, right? If we approach God unholy, then we would burn up. And he said, I'll, I'll take their place. I'll die. Though I am holy, I will die an unholy death. I die and they get my holiness. So now we can go to God with our holiness. So there's a way to get rid of anxiety and depression, fear, loneliness, worry, all of this. And it's not a weakness to admit that these things exist. And it's not a weakness to admit that they even plague your mind or 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 keep you up at night or seep into your everyday life it's not a weakness but when you cripple yourself by admitting that you don't want help or refusing to believe in hope when you deny the hope then then there is no hope because you've denied yourself the hope now i'm here to tell you about the hope because i didn't know about the hope right i heard about god people told me about god I knew, you know, who Jesus was, but I didn't know Jesus. And I never believed or knew his, his awesome power, his healing power. I didn't read for myself. I didn't know him for myself. I just heard what I heard growing up in Sunday school, in dead churches, in dead religion. I never saw the power of God. But when he touched me, I was healed. When I met him 18, 20 months ago, I was healed from depression, fear, anxiety. My unaliving thoughts were gone. I stopped harming myself. I stopped numbing myself in an instant, in an instant. And if you read the gospels, you see he comes near people, he touches them and in a moment they're healed. And I'm here to testify that it can be for you too, but you have to accept it and you have to come to him. So there is a verse that I want to share with you. It is written by the Apostle Paul. And he talks about this human weakness. 
So I believe it's in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. And this is red letter words. So this is Jesus. He says to Paul, but this is for all of us. My grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. The shoulders of the Lord can carry burdens that we cannot carry. And the moment that we accept that we are weak, we find his strength. If we try to carry things on our own, we're not going to ask for help. If we are burden bearers, we're not going to, we're not going to receive. We will be too stubborn to receive. Like in the beginning, I talked about denying that there's a problem, denying that these things exist or denying that there's hope and just accepting that that's how life is, that you're depressed, anxious, in fear. Fear grips so many people today. You don't need to be anxious. You don't. There was one time I realized I had a problem because a Sharpie on my counter fell and my back was turned. I heard a Sharpie fell and I jumped and I had so much terror. That's the level of anxious that I was. And that was before my mom died. When my mom died, I used to wake up with in, in panic. I had so much stress that I could not breastfeed my baby because my hormones were out of whack. I had so much cortisol and that is not normal and that is not healthy. That is not of God. That's not what he wants for us. Jesus says, this is what Jesus says. In 1128 of Matthew, he's, Jesus says, come to me, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The yoke, those things that you're yoked to, attached to, when you get attached to Jesus, those worries go away. And life is not, life is, life, life still has troubles, life still has problems. But we know that we have a comforter. We know that we have someone strong enough to bear it. We don't bear those things anymore. He said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. When we are weak, he is strong. His grace is the thing that gives us strength to come against all these temptations, all these worldly things, these demonic things. Hurting yourself, I'm going to tell you, hurting yourself on purpose is demonic. Wanting to die is demonic. It's not of God. Jesus said, I came to bring life. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, John 10, 10. But I've come so that they may have life and life more abundantly. That is what Jesus wants. He made you. Why would he make you to be depressed? He wouldn't. That is the result of a broken world. That is a result of sin. He says, I came so that they may have life and life more abundantly. These are his promises, his desires for you. And he will do it. He will do it. If you go to him, he said, come to me. You can't remain stubborn. You can't remain hopeless. I'm telling you that there is hope. You have a choice whether you want to believe it or not. Just as in John 3, we all know in John 3, 16, but I'm going to continue. He says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever should believe in him would not perish, right? Your spirit won't perish. Your body may but you'll have everlasting life. And keep going. It says, For God did not send his son in the world to condemn it, but that through him the world might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the one and only begotten son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. So the condemnation is if you reject the hope. If you reject the hope of God, then you do not receive the hope of God. And I'm here to say, I'm here to say, good morning, sis. I'm here to say that there is a cure for anxiety. There is a cure for depression. There is a hope in this dark world. His name is Jesus. But if you reject him, you will continue to go on day to day without hope, in fear, in stress, in worry, in loneliness, in anxiety, wanting to hurt yourself, wanting to end it all. 
And that is not what God wants for you. So come to his son today. Call out on his name. Believe that he is alive because he rose again. And he already paid for all that sickness. He paid for all that. He paid for your pain. He paid for your worries. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says that he was, he was pierced for our transgressions. He was wounded for our sins, our iniquities. By his stripes, we are healed. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. The payment for our peace today, he paid for 2,000 years ago. All you have to do is accept it. You just walk in it. Walk in it and believe it. He will not let you down. Do not trust man. Man will let you down. It is better to hope in God than in man. I pray that you that you heed my words because I'm testifying. He did it for me when I did not want him. But I had no hope and nowhere to go. And I heard, I knew that people had hope in Jesus. And so I cried out and I saw the power of God, the healing, transforming power of God. He changed my life. I only have breath in my lungs because of him. I tried to die, but he came to me. He came to me and he saved me and he put a new spirit in me. He cleaned me up. He changed everything about me. The person that I was is no more. I just want you to have that same life, that abundant life that he promises. I want that for you. You don't have to live in anxiety. You don't have to live in fear. Believe me today. Jesus loves you and he died for you. And there's nothing, there's nothing that you can do to separate yourself from his love and let his love heal you today. In Jesus name. Have a good day. I love y'all. Goodbye.